Okay, uh, there's been a, a misconception that's been going on long enough, and that is that um, going to a bigger carb reduces the flow restriction, which is what boosts the power. That's not it at all. What happens is that uh, the different velocity of the air causes a different size of fuel droplets, and the fuel droplets burn at different rates. Here's a graphic from a research paper, and it shows the correlation between uh, air velocity and uh, droplet diameter of the fuel. It's a little bit hard to see. It's a little bit, a bit gray, but it's there. And with a higher RPM uh, race engine, uh, you want a faster burn. So it's all about air velocity. It's not about uh, flow restriction. You want to talk about flow restriction, how about the reed valve, how about the air filter. The, the carb offers little to no restriction compared to those two. Smaller carb, faster velocity. Bigger carb, slower velocity. Okay, and the velocity affects the, the fuel atomization you know, breaking it up into the smaller sizes. So that's what is important right now, knowing that. And another thing that affects uh, the uh, selection of the carb is the compression. That's because with a higher compression, you have a quicker burn. And by that, I mean from the time of ignition until the peak pressure in the cylinder, that time is re reduced with a higher compression. This graphic right here illustrates that. In, in reviewing what manufacturers have done, I came up with this chart right here which basically shows the different size of carbs. Well, it doesn't really show carb size. It shows the different velocity, the air, air velocity. So, but it's fatally linking the engine size to the, uh, the RPM. So I wanted to disconnect those two because some some bikes are you know stretched to the limit on the RPM some of them are brought way down for street use and so it's not really fair to, to automatically assume that an engine size has a certain maximum RPM um, this right here is a graphic that are derived from this uh, graphic right here and it's uh, comparing compression ratio to the amount of degrees until peak pressure. So the main factors affecting combustion time are compression ratio, cylinder bore, and that is because the bigger the bore, the longer it takes from the uh, the spark in the center of the uh, of the combustion chamber that flame to reach the very uh, edge. So cylinder bore uh, peak power RPM. The higher the RPM, the less time there is for that flame to reach there within a certain amount of time to get maximum power. So the higher the RPM, the, uh, the shorter that, that time is. And the gasoline octane. There's always been some controversy about uh, gasoline, octane, and burn rate. My personal experience has been that it does affect the burn rate because when you don't have a detonation problem and you try different octane gases, you can, you can tell there's a difference in power, which means it's affecting the burn rate. But uh, if you don't want to believe me, look at this side right here from Aviation Pros. The key features of high octane gasoline are a higher ignition temperature and a slower burning rate. 
you just can't get any more specific than that. Okay, so I've made a, uh, a program that takes these all into consideration. And that's my carburetor calculator program. It will calculate the maximum air velocity and recommend a carburetor for street and trail and a carburetor for racing. So if what what it does is it uh, it depends upon your measured cranking PSI, which you you can guess at according to the wear on the rings and the original compression ratio. This calculator out here will tell you the the good cranking PSI that is uh, the pressure with good rings. So it goes by the cranking PSI, the cylinder bore size, transfer duration affects it a little bit, peak power RPM, and it computes down here the air velocity and the uh, curve diameter. What you need to do is to look at your spark plug. The center electrode should have a little, a little band right here of, of uh, lack of suit because it got burned off. This is just right. This is like the ideal is one half millimeter. If it's if it's more than half a millimeter, that means it's getting too hot, which means your ignition is too advanced. If it's not there at all, it's because your ignition is too retarded. You need to advance it more. So, yeah, your ignition comes into play also. This is assuming that you don't have to change the ignition. So that's that's it. Just um, there's a link in the description box on where to get the calculator. It's only five dollars, but it can really, really be a great advantage to know where you're at unless you want to buy three or four carburetors and test them trial and error to see which one's best okay thanks for watching